percentage and what are the different states involved when we click here the monthly sale for that particular state appears in the month of january the sale in this state is around 8 that is what is showing the lowest sale is in the month of october and the highest sale is in the month of june in this state the lowest sale is in the month of may and the highest sale is in the month of december so by viewing this report the management easily understands what's going on with their business and they can take further actions let's look into another type of report this report shows the daily sales by branch we can select a particular day in the month of july 2005 and the below chart will give you the daily sales in different branches so in the month of july on july 6 2005 the total sale will be here in this chart 6th july 2005 the sale is the highest sale is in this state and the lowest sale is in this state on 26th the highest sale is in this state and the lowest is in 11th the highest sale is in here and the lowest sale is in here and it also shows the sale amount when the management sees all these reports they totally understand what's going on with their business and they can take necessary actions these reports are constantly updated that means the OLAP systems will automatically go into the data warehouse system and when the data changes in that data warehouse these reports pull that changed data and analyze data and make all the necessary changes in the report this is automatically done by this system so we don't have to manually go into the system and every time we don't have to prepare these charts they are already pre-configured that's why they automatically generate the changes in each reporting area these kind of advanced features help the management to make proper decision and they can predict if something is changed or if we make this change in our company this is what we are going to get later they can make predictions very easily by using this kind of reporting systems this shows a prediction system here we can see when we reduce the cost of goods the net income will increase so what is the percentage that we can reduce to get higher net income the business people can easily predict by using this method when the selling expense increases the net income reduced if there is any possibility that they can reduce the interest expense and taxes then the net income increases what are the different ways or possibilities that will increase the net income they can easily understand the data what's going on with their business and they can teach other people in their business that this is what going on with the business when the gross sale that are the main uses of reports these reports are mainly used in business and these are fully automated and this is why we are using a perfect data warehouse and OLAP systems to design a very good decision support we saw what are the two types of design involved in a data warehouse project the two types of designs are star schema design and snowflake schema design while a data architect designs a data warehouse he designs the data warehouse according to mainly these two schemas and what are the main process or functions or tasks involved in this data warehouse design that's what we are going to learn there are mainly three type of tasks that involve in a complete data warehouse design these are mainly data modeling the ETL process extraction transformation unloading the final stage is the report generation we saw number of reports generated by using a data warehouse and OLAP system a data warehouse system design involves these three category designs data modeling etl and report generation we will be learning all these steps one by one and concentrating on the etl section because this is an informatica version 9 etl developer course so from tomorrow onwards we will be learning more about data modeling etl and report generation and we will be doing and working with informatica 
now for the demonstration purpose let me give you simple demonstration so uh, now we will go to the informatica and we will learn how informatica performs the etl operation by using a simple example we will take data from a source and we will transform that data and load it into another data warehouse we take data from one source a single source transform it and then load it into a data warehouse this is a simple demonstration how we are going to conduct the labs we will be learning the informatica architecture and how it functions and how it works how the etl process works with informatica and how it is going to transform the data for today's demonstration purpose i will be taking data from a source and we will move that data into a data warehouse informatica contains mainly two components these are the informatica server and the informatica client tool the informatica server is installed uh, on a machine and uh, an informatica developer won't go or configure or access the informatica server he is or she is only allowed to access the informatica client tool the informatica client tool is installed on his or her laptop they can access to the server by using the network provider through internet or local area networks whatever the way they can access to the server so the client tool is like this informatica power center this is the server component and this is the client component in the client system there is something called repository manager by using this client component we are connecting to the repository that is present in the informatica core that is installed in a system that is known as the informatica server 